Welcome. My name is Matt. I'm one of the pastors here at Howling United Methodist Church, and we're so glad that you can be here with us tonight to celebrate on this Christmas Eve the birth of the Christ child. We're glad you could be here with us for this very special service. Um, we have just a few announcements tonight. Um, we're going to do it during the children's sermon time? Okay. Are there announcements tonight that I am not aware of? Announcements tonight to make? All right, we will be having a regular service next Sunday on the 31st. Pastor Tom will be covering. Um, the Darren family will be on vacation, but we encourage you to come out next Sunday as Pastor Tom leads our worship service next Sunday morning. I don't know that there are any other announcements going to do the rest of the children's time. We're going to try and insert a children's sermon tonight since we have a few kids. And I'll just invite you to stand if you're able and give someone a handshake or a hug. Walk on them here and wish them a Merry Christmas tonight. Friends, I'm going to invite you to remain standing if you're able to. Please remain standing if you're able as you return to your places. And we'll begin our time of worship this evening. Our first song is it's one of my very favorite Christmas songs. It's been remade, contemporized, and we're going to be singing that version of it tonight. It's Joy to the World, Unspeakable Joy. Let us join together, please.
Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we are filled with joy as we gather in this place tonight, filled with unspeakable joy for the wondrous gift you gave in sending your son, Jesus Christ, into this world. We pray, Lord, tonight that as we gather in this place, you would fill us anew, afresh with your spirit, that we might be filled with the Christmas message, Christmas hope, Christmas love, that we might worship you in this place and let your love flow out from us when we leave it. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, Pastor Tom and Lois are going to come forward for us and light the final candle on our Advent wreath, the Christ candle. I'm reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Crinius was governor of Syria, and everyone, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn.
Amen. We don't always have children at the 9 o'clock service, but I know we have at least a handful, so I'd like to invite them to come up this time, please, if you'd like to join us for the children's time. The Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Okay, we don't have as many. We're used to big crowds of kids, right? We don't have as many tonight. Well, most of them are at the other service, but I want to have everybody say Merry Christmas more enthusiastic than the adults. So you got to be really loud with so few of us. You ready? Merry Christmas! Merry Awesome. All right, so I'm going to show you a few presents I got already, okay? Because people know me, got me this, okay? You can see what this is. Someone has made this for me. Can you see who's on that? Yeah, it's Superman. And then one of my best friends got me this. It's from the very first Superman comic book. And is blown up and made into a print that I can put on the wall. If I actually had this comic book, I'd be a millionaire. The very first Superman comic book. So the reason people got these for me is because they know that I like superheroes, not just Superman, but lots of superheroes. I always have. From the time that I was your age, I always liked superheroes. And the reason is because I wanted to have superpowers. I usually actually wanted to, I prayed this is a true story. I prayed that God would give me superpowers like Superman or Spider-Man or somebody like that because I thought if I had superpowers that I could change the world, you know? I could fight evil and injustice, you know? I could do all kinds of incredible things to try to change the world if only I had powers like Superman or somebody like that. Of course, I found out I was never going to get superpowers. Mr. Nell, can you bring a plain white envelope up to me, please, from the pew? But what I learned instead is that I had a different power inside of me. Thank you. It's the power of God's love, the power of God's spirit inside of me. So you know what we do at our house at Christmas time? I give people every year in their bulletin out there, they have a plain white envelope. Part of what we do at our house at Christmas time is we write Jesus on the envelope. And inside, everybody in the family has to write something that they did to show God's love for other people. And what we do is we talk about how, even though we don't say, you know, I'm not Superman because, shh, I am, right? But I don't have superpowers. I have God's power inside of me. So, for example, on Christmas Day, my family is going go to go out to hospitals because there's a few people who are in hospitals, and we're going to go out and sing for them and just visit them a little bit on Christmas Day, you know. We have family time and open our presents and everything, but we spend even a little Christmas Day with some other people. The youth group's gone out Christmas caroling to some people in the congregation who are in their homes and stuff, and we do all those kinds of things, and there's lots of ways that we show God's love. And you may think, well, Pastor Matt, that's not like, you know, catching a bad guy or lifting a car or something like Superman would do. That's nothing like, you know, so powerful. But whenever we share God's love with someone, it's very powerful. I really believe that. So I may not ever have the power of a superhero, but I really believe that I have God's power, the power of his love inside of me. And what God wants me to do is share that with the world. So part of what we do at Christmas time at our house, and why I give everybody a white envelope every year, is I encourage them to write down and put on the tree something, at least one or two things that their family has done for God, for other people, so that when they're opening gifts for everybody else, they remember to take a minute and celebrate what they've done for God. And when we do something for other people and share God's love, we've done that for God, okay? Now we have a little gift for all of you tonight too. I think Sam was gonna bring those up here. We'll give everybody one. Do we have enough to give everybody two, Ms. Janelle? Let's give everybody two. And Ms. Janelle's going to show you what these are and talk about them for a second. Sam's going to get a few more, okay? So this is... Something. It says... Jesus, who was born... For you and me, and then unto us the child is born from Isaiah. Okay? And every year we give the kids a special gift for Christmas. This year our special gift is this. Which kids know what to do with this? Show me. Oh, we got, this is called.
called a slap break. You have to take the plastic off first, and then it'll slap on. After you take the plastic off, it'll stick on you. It's a very fun gift. All right, so my friends, enjoy that gift. But while they are looking at their gift, I want to share with you another gift. We have so many people in this congregation who help the children at this church. Um, we have wonderful kids. We've got wonderful things going on in the children's ministry. And we are so thankful for each one of you for all that you do to help us. So um, many of you help throughout the year. You teach, you shepherd, you help in the kitchen, you donate food for VBS, you do all kinds of things. You work in the tech room, all kinds of things that you do for us. This is the children's um, ministry way of saying thank you because we couldn't have these vital ministries without you. And it's an ornament and it says glory to God and it's just a, a small token of our appreciation for the superhero in you. You know, Pastor Matt said he wanted to be a superhero. Well, if you're helping with kids, you're a superhero. So thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Okay, and guys, He's we have... out at the welcome desk. We have two bracelets because what we want to do is share the love of God with other people. That's what we put in the envelope when we share God's love with someone. So you can have a bracelet for yourself and you can have a bracelet to give to someone else to share God's love and tell them the news, okay? All right. If you're visiting tonight, we normally have 50 to 60 kids up here for a children's sermon on a Sunday morning. Come check it out sometime and see everything we have for your kids and youth here in our church. Thank you, everybody, for coming up here tonight. You go back and sit with mom and dad or whoever you're here with tonight. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Friends, we're not going to take the time to share joys and concerns tonight. Instead, what I invite you to do is prepare our hearts for prayers to join together in singing, O Come All You Faithful.
I'd ask you to pray silently with me, and although we're not taking names, I'd ask you to remember uh, three persons as uh, you pray. Uh, one is, or one's the whole family, the Champ family, at the death of Betty Champ, and please raise them up as well at the funeral this week. Uh, Chuck Mays is in the hospital, a very sick coffin, and a lot of us have gone through that. And uh, Roddy Rudnick, early Tuesday morning, will be having open heart surgery, so please remember those, plus transplants and all the things we've been asked to think about this morning. Pray with me silently. Yes, Lord, oh, come, let us adore you. May the faithful come always. May they raise holy hands. May they speak with the anointing of your grace and goodness, a witness to all the world. May their light shine as we sing at the end of the service. Lord God, you've called us to be a people of God. And what a wonderful thing it is to be in the church family. What a wonderful thing it is to minister to our children, to our youth. What a wonderful thing it is to see our people use their gifts in so many wonderful and positive ways. Lord, what a blessing you pour upon us. Blessings you pour upon this church family. And we continue to rejoice and give thanks for all that you do for us. And I thank you, Lord, for all those who do so much for him. It's Christmas time. It's a wonderful time, and it's an awesome time. It's a time to be filled with joy and goodness and peace. And as I prayed earlier, we could use a whole lot of peace in the world and a whole lot of goodwill towards men. It's been tough. We haven't heard much of that, so let our church speak it. May our church always speak peace and goodwill. Lord, use us in so many ways. We thank you for all the prayer requests that we have. We thank you for the anointing on each one of these ones who are seriously sick, Lord, and needs a special touch from you and a need of guide from the, from the doctor's hands. And those who have gone on in glory, Lord, been lifted up from this life into the next and blessed to be in your eternal presence forever. Lord, it's Christmas, and yet Easter comes, but it can't come without Christmas. And so we thank you for the Christ child who came and opened up his arms and his heart and his life to us and asked us to come in and be and stand with him. Be with the service that's yet to come and be with pastors who preach his Lord and be with his family as they go out into the world to, to have a little bit of fun. It may be a blessed time and a, a resting time for all of them. Fill them with your love, grace, and goodness. As I ask you to fill everyone here, I, Lord, I know you held the weather off a little bit, but it's, it's going to get worse. You'll be with all those who are traveling tomorrow. Yes, Lord, you taught us to pray, and I'm thankful for that because there are times, times, Lord, when we just don't have the words. The disciples understood that, and they said to Jesus, teach us to pray, and he said, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Brothers and sisters, God's been so good to us. It's Christmas season. We get to give back to the Lord. As our brother always says, where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. And may our treasure be with the Lord Jesus this day.
Lord God, you've given so much to us at Christmas and always. We thank you for the opportunity to give back to you because we know there are so many people who need to be touched by your love in some way. And we know that the gifts that we give tonight and always are used by you to change this world and to let your light and love shine through in some way. So take these gifts, Lord, and use them to do your work and your will. Bless both the gift and the giver. And may each be used by you at Christmas and always. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, there's a tradition here at this church at this 9 o'clock Christmas Eve service to serve Holy Communion so we might remember that the story begins with Christmas but ends with Easter, the death and the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we'll be celebrating Holy Communion. It is our tradition here also to use the liturgy that's found in your hymnals. I believe that will be on the screen for you tonight, though. And we can use the screen, or you may follow in your hymnal if you'd like. And we'll use this liturgy together as we prepare our hearts to receive Holy Communion this Christmas Eve. Christ the Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this to all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Friends, you need not to be a member of this church. If you are visiting here tonight, anyone is welcome to receive Holy Communion. The ushers will be coming forward in just a moment. We'll be serving by intention tonight, meaning we'll be asking you to take the bread and dip it into the cup and then to eat, and then you may return to your seat. 
The ushers will be leading you forward as well, dismissing you by pews to have you come forward. If those who would assist me in serving communion would please come forward at this time. Could have swept in like a tidal wave, oh, an ocean to ravage our hearts. You could have come through like a roaring flood to wipe away the things we've scarred. But you came like the wind. Snow. You were quiet, quiet and soft and slow, falling from the sky in the night to the earth below.
In the night 
the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Throughout the season of Advent, as we always do, we've been having families in the church light the Advent wreath, and we've been reading the different parts of the Christmas story, a story you know well when you've heard since the time you were a child. But tonight, I'd like to think for just a few moments about how God had everything carefully planned out in this Christmas story. You know, he picked Joseph because Joseph was descended from the house of King David so the prophecy might be fulfilled. He chose Mary, a virgin who was highly favored by God. He placed the couple in Bethlehem so the prophecy of where Jesus was born would be fulfilled, a place incredibly crowded as people returned to their hometowns for the census. He sent an angel to Mary to tell her what was going to happen to her, and he sent one to Joseph in a dream so that Joseph would not leave Mary, but would still marry his betrothed. God had everything carefully planned out. God put a star in the sky so that wise people who knew what to look for would be able to follow the star. To remind us today that wise people should still seek Jesus. God sent angels to shepherds who were nearby to proclaim the good news. It was no accident that it was shepherds who heard the news because we are still to remember today that God is our shepherd who leads his sheep. That's why God picks shepherds. God carefully planned it all out, every detail of the Christmas story, except for this one thing. When Joseph and Mary got there, there was no room for them in the inn. It's strange, isn't it? God covered everything else. First of all, this is Joseph's hometown. Surely the place we know would have been incredibly crowded, overrun with everyone returning there for the census. But Joseph shouldn't have had to have gone to an inn. This was his hometown, meaning his family lived there. And family was everything in Bible times. But no one would receive them, not even his own family, because Joseph and Mary were unwed and pregnant. And in those days, that was punishable by death. So he couldn't even stay with his own family. And even though it was crowded in town, don't you think that God could have worked one more thing, worked out one more detail in this Christmas story? Couldn't there have been one room left at the inn? I mean, this is God. God was sending angels everywhere in this Christmas story. Couldn't have God sent just one more angel to the innkeeper also and said, Psst, 
hey, you, innkeeper, I'd like to reserve room number three. You know, the one with the king bed because the king of kings is going to be born there. You know, something like that. Well, maybe not that, but couldn't God have worked out this one more detail? Why? After this journey on donkey, when they get there, why, after everything else is planned, why is there no place for Jesus to be born? This is the biggest moment in human history. It's the moment that changed the calendar, our way of keeping time from B.C. to A.D. It's the biggest event ever, and God has taken care of every single detail except there's no place for Jesus to be born. Jesus had to be born in a manger. People had to make a space, not God. God didn't plan the space. A person made room in a manger because there was no place for them to go. The king of kings was born in this humble space, probably laying the baby in an animal's feeding trough. Doesn't it seem incredibly odd that God would take care of everything else so carefully, so completely, send angels everywhere to talk to everybody, to plan everything out, put the star in the sky to lead lead people from far away. God takes care of everything, but there's no place for Jesus to be born. Well, my friends, if you don't know, that's the whole point. That's the whole idea of the Christmas story. God takes care of everything except one thing. Jesus needs a place to be born, a humble place. And that place still today is within each one of us, in our hearts, in our lives. The whole idea of Christmas is that Jesus isn't just born in a story, but is born in our hearts and lives. Do you think it was an accident that there was no place for Jesus to be born? That a place had to be made that God just didn't take care of that detail? No. That was God's plan to show us that we have to make space for the baby to be born in us. If you remember, the Easter story is the same way. You might remember that when Jesus died, he was placed in a borrowed tomb not in a family tomb. There was no place to lay the body of Jesus when he died, and a place had to be found. A place had to be found for the miracle of the resurrection of Easter to take place. The resurrection that conquers sin and death. There was no place to lay the body of Jesus. A borrowed tomb had to be found. You think that's an accident? That God just didn't know how to plan that? No, it was to show us that we have to make a place, that when we make room in our hearts for Christ to be born, we also share in the power of his glorious resurrection. Easter and Christmas are tied together. When we make space for Christ to be born in us, we make a way to share in the power of his resurrection as well. And that's the incredible joy of both Christmas and Easter is that God took care of everything and only leaves one thing up to us. We have to make room in our hearts for Christ to be born. We have to create that room. One of my favorite Christmas carols is Joy to the World because I love the words besides just the idea of joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king and the very best line Let every heart prepare him room because that's what Christmas is about. We have to make a place for God's spirit to be born anew, afresh in us again. That's why we sing, let every heart prepare him room. But you know, it was very crowded in Bethlehem. The census was going on. Everyone was returning to their hometown. There were people and animals everywhere. Bethlehem and cities like that would have been overrun with people everywhere. The reason that there was no room at the inn for Jesus is because Jesus was crowded out. Isn't that still what happens today in our lives, if we are honest, that we crowd Jesus out? There are too many things going on, too many responsibilities, too many places we have to be, too many things we have to do. And Sunday mornings or other times to be with God, 
just can't be a priority because God gets crowded out. Jesus gets crowded out, and we don't make room in our busy lives, in our hearts, for Jesus, for God, for God's Spirit to fill us so that it can flow out from us into this world. It's very easy to let Jesus get crowded out in this busy world in which we live. But the whole point of the Christmas story is that a place had to be prepared, a place had to be found. Someone had to make room for Christ to be born. You think God couldn't have planned out where Jesus would be born? That detail was left so that we could understand. We have to make that happen in our hearts, in our lives. God did everything else in sending Jesus. All we have to do is open up our hearts and prepare room. That's why one of my favorite times of the year is this Christmas Eve service. One of my very favorite moments of the year is the one we're about to celebrate when we sing Silent Night together by candlelight because in that moment every year, I feel God tugging on my heartstrings. I feel God speaking to me, if you will, pulling on my heart saying, this is a holy moment. Feel my presence now in this moment. Hear me calling you. Hear me saying, I want to be born again anew in you, afresh. Open up your heart. Prepare a room for me to be born there and live there and reign there as your Lord and Savior. One of the best things about Christmas Eve when you take your candle is that you get to take your candle and turn and share your light with someone else. And that is how the light is spread because that's what Christmas is about. We prepare space in our hearts for Christ to be born, to burn there, to shine for others to see. And then we take that light and we share it with our neighbors. We share it with those around us. The amazing thing about my candle, one candle in a room like this, is that when you turn out the lights and have my candle, there isn't much power to shine, to light much of this room. The power of my candle comes from shining it with my neighbor, to use it to light my neighbor's candle. The power of his or her candle is that they can light their neighbor's, neighbor's candles. And when we light, all the candles in this place, this room was aglow with the light of God burning in our hearts and lives, shining through for others to see. And the wondrous part of Christmas is that when we blow those candles out, God's spirit is still alive in us. And when we leave this place and go out into the world, there are so many people who do not have the light and love of God in their hearts, in their lives. And we are meant to carry that candle with us out into the world and light their hearts, their lives with the love of God. It starts with me. It starts with you. It starts with each one of us. It starts when we prepare room in our hearts for Christ to be born again, anew, afresh. I know the world is so busy, so crazy even on Sunday mornings. Didn't used to be that way, of course. There were blue laws and everything else, but now everything pulls us in a million different directions and away from God. But God calls us tonight when we hold that candle to say, now, in this holy moment, let me be born in you again. Let me fill your heart and life with my light and my love. And in this new year, let it burn there. Come, continue to worship me. Continue to be close to me. Don't let this moment be a moment that ends, but stay close to me. Continue to be filled with my spirit, my love that can pour forth from you into this world. Christmas is that holy moment when we celebrate that moment in history when it happened, when Christ came into the world. It's that moment when we hold the candle and thank God in that holy moment. But we can't let that holy moment end when we leave this place. 
We have to continue to let his light and love shine in us and through us so that it can go forth into this world and light the hearts and lives of others. We'll be singing together Silent Night as we do the candles as we always do. And then we'll be singing together another song that talks about taking our candles and leaving this place and lighting the world with the love of God. As we prepare for that holy moment, would you please pray with me? Lord God, we just give you thanks for sending Jesus, your son, into this world to become one of us, to teach us how to live and love. We give you thanks that you took care of everything, so many things beyond our understanding, the very miracle that God could come to earth in the form of Jesus, things beyond our understanding, and yet all we're meant to really fully understand is this, we need to make room in our hearts for you to be born there. That that's what Christmas is all about. The decorations and the cookie baking and the wrapping and the gifts and all those things are meant to be a wonderful celebration of the fact that we have not just sung let every heart prepare him room, but we have opened up our hearts to let you be born in us. So tonight as we hold that candle, as we feel you tugging on our heartstrings again, may this be a time when we really allow you to be born in us and fill us. May we allow ourselves to continue to worship you and be filled by you in this coming year. May we never grow apart from you, but desire to grow closer to you so that we can be the people of God we've, called to, we've been called to be and we can let our light shine in this world that so desperately needs it. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, born this night, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Friends, I'll be taking my candle and lighting it from the Christ candle. The ushers will come forward and I will light their candles and they will move among you and they will distribute the light to you. I invite you to please stand if you are able. And we will join together in singing Silent Night as we light our candles. Think about what it means as you turn to your neighbor and light his or her candle.
Friends, with your candles extended, we're going to sing the first verse one more time, a cappella. Clay will bring us in with just the opening chord. And as you sing this first verse one more time, a cappella, I encourage you to look around the room. You know the words to the first verse. Look around the room at the faces of the people and the glows of the candles. And let yourself feel the tug in your heartstring tonight as God asks you to be born, let himself be born again within you on this holy moment on this holy night. Let's sing together the first verse once more of Silent Night. Silent night Holy night All is calm All is bright Bright sing one more song together tonight with our candles lit. Carolyn's going to lead us in singing, take your candle, go light your world, to remind us to take this feeling outside the walls of this place to light the candles, the hearts of our brothers and sisters. If you know the words, you're welcome to sing along. Let's join together. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some darkly cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way see now your sister she's been robbed and lied to she still holds a candle without a flame so carry your candle run to the darkness seek out the tired and worn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your way. 
Friends, we're just about to blow out our candles together, and this moment will end. I was telling someone before the first service that I actually had planned in my own funeral someday for the congregation, whoever's gathered there that day, to gather candles and light them and sing Silent Night, because this moment means so much to me. I've dedicated my life to trying to let my light shine and pour it into the hearts and lives of others that their lights may shine. And I want that to be what we all feel tonight as we hold these candles. When we blow them out, may we remember that God's spirit is still alive in us. May we continue to worship him, continue to be close to him, not let this moment really end, but let it live in us when we leave this place and let it flow out from us into this world. Let us blow out our candles, but let this moment live on within us. <clears throat> Friends, the lights will come back on in this place, but remember that out in the world is darkness like this, and we've overcome the darkness with the way that we let our light shine and pour into the hearts and lives of others. As you leave this place and do so with your lives, may the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now, remain with you forevermore. Amen.